Hey guys, Cicely Everson here, founder of Tau Holistics, herbal and functional medicine practice. And in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about why we feel lost. Um, quite frankly, why we feel stressed, anxious, depressed, but the actual reason behind why we feel lost. Sometimes we feel completely isolated, um, like we are lost in the wilderness, literally by ourselves, like we just feel so disconnected um, and detached from life. And sometimes feeling disconnected or detached is not a bad thing. But um, there are times when we just feel like we don't know where we belong, right? And this can be a really difficult place to be. However, it is also an awesome place for birth and for change. And so when we feel that we are lost, lost in the sauce, we don't know which way is up, just not feeling like ourselves, that is oftentimes our dark night of the soul. And the dark night of the soul is when we really just feel true isolation and uh, we begin to question everything about our lives. Um, we, we wonder why we are where we are, you know, why our experiences are, how they are, and just so many different things. And this is so normal. Um, and it's something that I feel like everyone goes through as they grow and evolve. So I like to say we don't go through things, we grow through things. So you do have a choice. You can go through things in life, whether it's the dark night of the soul and feeling lost or depressed or stressed. Um, you can go through that and go through all the motions and go through all of the feelings and all the things, or you can grow through it. And there's a difference. You may experience the same emotions, the same feelings. Um, you may have the same people in your immediate reality. You may have the same life experiences in your, in your immediate reality, but growing through it allows you to look at this through a completely different lens. If you're going through something, that makes you feel like a victim, right? That's There's a frequency there of a level of victim consciousness, right? You don't want to be a victim because when you play the victim and you have the self-pity parties and you allow yourself, we all have been there, but when you allow yourself to stay there in that rut, right? Like you just cannot climb yourself out of this rut. When you allow yourself to stay there, you then attract more and more of this level of victim consciousness. You're going to attract more life experiences to you that just validate where you are in life. And so you can go through your dark night of the soul or your feelings of being lost or you can grow through it. When you grow through something, you realize that it's not happening to you, but it's happening for you. You might not like it, just like when you were growing up, you didn't like the way your parents talked to you or what they told you to do, but at some point you realized that they were telling you for your own good and it was exactly what you needed to hear. You grew through that, right? And it's the same with feeling lost, feeling isolated, feeling depressed. You can go through it or you can grow through it. So you can ask yourself, you know, what can I gain from this situation? What can I do to better myself? How can I grow through this and learn and be strengthened and be bolstered by this experience versus just sitting there having a pity party, being mad and pissed off at people, whether it's other people or yourself? We've all been there, right? So that's the first thing is deciding whether or not you're going to go through it or grow through it. Because when you are going through things alone, when you're in that situation, it can be really tough, but you still get to decide if you're going to be in reaction mode or if you are going to choose. So when you're in reaction mode, you react to things. Someone says something to you, you react. You have your defenses up, your boxing gloves on, you react, right? But when you get to choose, and we all get to choose, when you decide to choose, I should say, you actually get to take a moment to pause and say, how do I wanna handle this situation? If I'm in my dark night of the soul, which I've experienced on more than one occasion in my life, and I'm feeling completely disconnected from life, I don't know where I belong, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I doing with my life? Um, when I feel that way, I can choose to react emotionally to circumstances and to things and oh, boo hoo and 
look at my bank account and be upset or look at my credit report or look at whatever the, the situation is, right? It doesn't matter. Or I can sit there and I can decide, you know what, I get to choose where I go from here. I don't like the way I'm feeling and therefore I'm going to use the fact that I'm having this experience I'm going to use this to, to catapult me as a catalyst to allow me to, to change, to spark change. So what we don't realize sometimes when we feel lost and when we go through that dark night of the soul, which can last for months, maybe weeks for some people, months for others, maybe even longer for some people. But when we go through that, you know, we have the opportunity to say, thank you for the contrast. Because it's happening and sometimes we get all caught up in our feelings, but what the universe is really telling us is, I'm going to show you something that you don't want, hopefully, so that way you will choose what you do want. So sometimes we get mad at how other people treat us, how they talk to us, what they say to us, what they do, even if they're not doing something to us. It might be what they're not doing, right? If you live with your partner and they're not helping you at home or they're not doing something that you feel like that you expect them to do, that's a whole different conversation about having expectations. But if you're putting your expectations in someone to do something and they don't do it, then you know, you can be emotionally affected by that, right? But you actually can decide to say, hmm, you can notice it and acknowledge it and say, oh, I really don't like that. And when you see that you don't like it, be grateful for the contrast that God is showing you this contrast, which you don't want. That way you have the opportunity to choose what you do. Let that spark your next decision instead of wallowing in anger or your pissed offness <laughs> at whoever the person is. Instead of being pissed off, angry, hurt, crying, depressed, all of that stuff, use it as a catalyst to help you make a new decision. And this will get you out of the victim consciousness to being a victor, to being a victor, right? To be able to win at whatever your situation is. Because at the end of the day, we're all winning at life. So this is pretty cool. I learned this from a book. Let me break this down. Um, and it's really simple, but I think it's a book by Gary Bishop, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he says, we're all winning at life. We all are. Whether you're living in... Um, a place that you can't stand, or whether you're living in a five bedroom house that you actually that you absolutely love, whether you have the the job of your dreams, the career of your dreams, or whether you're working clocking in and you hate your job, whatever it is, you're winning at it because you're in that circumstance. So as long as you maintain the vibration at whatever um, circumstance you're in, if that vibration doesn't change, that energy doesn't change, you're going to con continue to get more of that life experience because that's the energy that you've been putting out. But when you decide that you want more, then that energy has no other choice by universal law than to shift and to change, right? And that's when you'll start to see life experiences changing. New people will come into your life. New opportunities will come into your life. You'll start to not want to do some of the old things that you did. You'll start to not want to talk to some of the people that you're even friends with. And that can be tough. Sometimes it might be people in your house. So just understanding that that's kind of how it can be sometimes, it's okay. You just have to remember to grow through it. So wherever you are, you're winning. You're winning because that's where you are. If you don't like the area that you're winning in, Pick another area and do the work to get yourself up that emotional vibrational ladder. That way you are giving out positive, good vibrations. We all say good vibes, good vibrations, putting out those positive vibrations and that positive energy. So that way you can start to magnetize it and get that back. I also wanted to share something else that I learned, and this is about visualization versus visioning. So there are two different things. Now, I listen to a lot of Michael Beckwith. If you guys aren't familiar with who he is, he's the pastor of Agape Spiritual Center in Los Angeles. Um, he's a phenomenal speaker, phenomenal teacher, um, and he talks about the process of life visioning. So, you know, and I've talked about visualization quite a bit in some of my videos, and visualization is really, really juicy. It's really helpful. It's really powerful. It's when you basically sit um, in, in a space and really just visualize whatever it is you're trying to um, to attract or manifest, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. 
you know, I want a new house right now. So in my visualization process, I am visualizing oh, exactly the feeling and the vibe that my new house is going to give, what my furniture looks like, where it's arranged, down to the way the carpet feels under my feet. I'm visualizing and feeling all of this right now, y'all. That is an example of visualization. And you can see from the smile on my face that emotions are attached to visualization. And that's okay. You know, we get attached to the outcome, sometimes too much, but we get emotionally attached to the outcome because it feels so good and so juicy to, to think about whatever it is we're thinking about. And that is okay, whether you're visualizing a person, a relationship, a material thing, um, or an experience, it's all okay. But what you can do to take it a step further is to start the visioning process. And the visioning process is when you surrender and you realize that God has, or the universe, great spirit, whatever you like to call the creator, God has already given you a path the universe has already carved out this amazing path. And sometimes we try to do too much. And a lot of times it's just through exploration and learning and that's okay. But sometimes we get caught up and we take all these detours and all of these alternate paths when we really need to sometimes just sit down, be still and listen and just ask spirit for the next move. Like God, what is my next step? What is it that I want to unfold in my life? What can I do to help that thing unfold, right? And so visioning is surrendering and letting go of that emotional component that's attached to all the juicy stuff that you visualized, right? Letting go and realizing that those things that you want can be a part of your life, but the most important thing is that deeper knowing of your path that your path that has been laid out. Now you can always carve and recarve and redefine that path, but your, your basic path that the universe has carved out is already there. It's just about surrendering and having that deep knowing that it's there. And when we start to lose the emotional attachment and the wants and the longing for it, that's when it starts to, to connect and to come to us. Because we can want something so bad that we actually want it out of our life. Like we have so many thoughts and emotions around wanting something, but what we're really doing is sending a message to the universe that we don't have it. I need it. Oh, I want this new house so bad. Oh, that translates into, oh, I need this new house so bad, which also translates into, I don't have the house I want right now. And that doesn't send good messages out to the universe, right? So law of attraction, that universal law is going to give you more of that energy that you're putting out. So it's okay to want things and to be emotionally attached to things, but we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket and say, oh, it's all or nothing. We want to really surrender, surrender to our purpose. You know, we all have a similar purpose and that's to be loving, to be humans who can love and to be non-judgmental. And that's why we're always a work in progress because that job is quite frankly never done. But um, it's all a process. So when we learn to surrender, lose the emotional attachment to the outcome and know that yes, I want this, whatever this image is that I'm holding in my head, this is what I so deeply want, but I'm also surrendering and knowing that what the universe has laid out for me is going to be perfectly suited just for me. And so when you feel lost, lean on that knowing that the answer to your prayers or the answer to whatever you've been asking the universe, the answers are already there. Sometimes we have to get out of our own head. We have to stop talking to so many people about our prob quote unquote problems, our challenges, and um, and just know that it will unfold. But first we have to have that knowing. We can't trick our body. We can't trick the universe, you know, into thinking that we're, that it's like saying, oh, I'm not scared of something that you know that you're terrified of, right? You have to work through a process until you get to a point where you truly aren't afraid and there's no fear. You know, your body on an energetic level knows how you're feeling. So words might come out of your mouth, but if the energy from your body doesn't match the vibration of those words, there's a conflict. And so um, 
we feel isolated and we feel scared and depressed and sad at times. And quite frankly, sometimes we ask ourselves, what the heck am I doing here? Like in life, what is my purpose? What is my mission? Why am I here? What's my next step? We have all these questions, right? Um, And that's okay. But the reason for feeling that way is because the universe is trying to birth a change in you. So what will your rebirth look like? Instead of feeling like your dark night of the soul, you're feeling lost, like you're literally out in the woods. I remember a time feeling like I was like a little scared child, just like standing in the middle of a forest all alone. That's how I felt. That's the best way I can you know, verbally describe how I felt. That would be a pretty scary feeling for a kid, right? And that's how I have felt, you know, at times, especially going through periods of change in my life. And so think about that. Just knowing that even when you feel that lost, when you feel that scared or depressed or anxious or whatever it is, just know that your path has already been carved for you and lean on that. Um, There is a purpose for it. And so when we get out of our heads and we realize that this is happening for us and not to us, it's happening for us to benefit us. And just like when we were a kid and we didn't want to hear anything our parents had to say, we realized when we became parents or when we became adults that everything they said was spot on. It was for our own good. We couldn't see it then, but we saw it later right? And it's the same thing here. We feel lost. You know, you may feel isolated and it you may not be able to see through the windows right now because they're a little foggy. But if you just surrender to the knowing, knowing that your parents have your best interest at heart, right? And in this case, knowing that the universe has your best interest at heart, go through your feelings, go through the emotions, whatever it is, but don't stay there. Once you develop that deep knowing, then that's when the windows get clearer, you have so much more clarity, and then you start to walk that path that the universe has laid for you. So I hope that this helps somebody. I just felt kind of inspired just to talk about this topic because we're all dealing with very challenging times in close quarters for a lot of us. And so I hope it's been helpful. If you guys have questions, you know how to reach me. This wasn't our usual health and wellness video, right? But I just wanted to kind of share a little bit of that information and what has helped me And I pray that it helps and blesses uh, you as well. Take care. Talk to you guys soon.